Hello, 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 hello. Um, this is a, a very beautiful afternoon. Um, I promptly uh, decided to come and appear on this forum <laughs> and uh, speak a word that I spoke in a church. I was invited to be the guest speaker this morning. And, and I felt the message was so powerful and I want my friends to, to hear about it. It may bless you um, and, and change your perception and your um, thinking about issues that you're going through. Uh, but as, before I start, listen to this um, wonderful song. It's one of the songs that... Um, I love so much. It speaks to my heart. It was spoken by Bethel Music, so I, I don't own any copyrights in this song as as you listen to it and 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 see the confession of of, of the singer saying how he loves God because his masses never fail. From the moment he wakes up, you know, he will sing of the goodness of God. And all his life, God has been so faithful and is faithful to us. He said, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. I have known you as a father and as a friend. So, for your goodness runs after me. May the goodness of the Lord run after you as I speak in this message and in this forum today. Let's sing together this song just for a little while as I come to speak to you. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. The goodness is running after, it's running after me. The goodness is running after. Hallelujah. Are you able to give God everything, literally everything, for His love, His goodness, His mercies is running after you? Is running after you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Today, in the Apostolic Faith Church, which I was invited to be the guest speaker. I spoke a word that made me tearful and, and cry and discovering uh, the journey that I have walked with God and, and realized how amazing and how good, how faithful, how, you know, how faithful God has been in this journey. And, and the topic of this message that I preach today, um, uh, I put it to be the best and the good of you must come out no matter what good and the best out of you must come out before the lord calls you home before you go to rest before you go to eternity here on earth good and the best of you must come out it doesn't matter and i want to read the scripture basing my preaching today on the book of Genesis chapter 50 from 15 to 21. And the Bible says this, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? 
So they send word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of, the, of God, of your father. When their message came to him, to Joseph, he wept. Verses 18. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. Verses 19. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. I am in the place of God. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. You know, we've listened to this song that has, you know, has been going on. It says, goodness is running after us. Goodness is running after me. As you listen to me, I want to assure you that good, the goodness, good news, and a good report must come out of your life before he calls you home. You affirm this truth and take it by force. You need to affirm it. If it means shouting it out, you need to do it. If it means looking at a mirror and speaking to it, you know, in my room, in my house, I have three mirrors. And in these mirrors, there's one in my bedroom, there's one in the corridor, and there's one in the bathroom. And these are my talking points, that when I wake up in the morning, I speak to the mirror and I speak to myself. And I will say, Margaret, something good must come out of you. Going to the corridor towards the bathroom, I speak to that mirror. And in the bathroom, I speak to it. And sometimes I stand there for maybe five minutes speaking to Margaret on the other side of the mirror, assuring her that something good must come out of it, must come out of you. Goodness must follow you all the days of your life in the land of the living. Not when I'm gone so that things would come that connects to Margaret. No, it is now. I'm looking forward that good things shall run after me and should follow me. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twelve. the Bible says this. From the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent, suffered assault, suffered battles. And it says, and the violent, the violent men, the violent women, the violent servants, the violent children of God will seize it by force at a precise price. You pay a price for everything good that is fashioned for your life. You fight it for you to get the best out of you. You fight it. There is a battle out there in your environment where you are, even in your own family, in your workplace, in your marriage. Everywhere you go, there is a battle. And the battles you are going through, it aims to dilute, to destroy that good that God created in you. That must come out before he calls you home. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And that kingdom is in you. You are the carrier of the kingdom of God. You are the carrier of the goodness 
of God. You are the carrier of the revelations of God. You are the carrier of the prophecies of God. Some of you listening to me, you are the carrier of the destiny of your family. The, at a opportune time, there's a word that you will declare upon your family, upon your children, upon your relatives. A word that is in you, that is embedded within you, that is waiting to explode at the right time so that your family can move forward. So that your community can move forward. There are words that God has put in me. And sometimes I've spoken to people and prayed for them. And God begins to unravel and to open doors and to bring healing in their lives. But before those words would have come out of me, the things that I have gone through, I cannot tell you. It has been a battle. To be a Christian and to know Christ, it is a battle. Because the devil knows exactly what you are carrying. That the moment you are given that opportunity, you will destroy the kingdom of the devil. Hallelujah. As I promised, as I opened with the adding that the best and the good will come out of you. Must come out of you, no matter what you are going through. We are in a season of challenge everywhere. Economical channel, challenge, you know, a spiritual challenge, social challenges. We are going through so much. You know, uh, uh, this coronavirus has come and ravaged so many things and changed things. But I want to assure you, them who will fight those who will fight, those who will resist, those who will be focused, those who will put their heads up, hallelujah, will survive and the best will come out of you during this season. Hallelujah. Psalms 23, 6, the Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. These words were written by David. I don't know what circumstances he was going through. But when he wrote Psalms 23, it must be one of the difficult moments in his life to encourage us in faith not to give up, but to press on, to press on, to press on, to press on to the mark of our higher calling. Sometimes things come to us and you find you are a loner. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to share with. Sometimes even the people you are talking to are in a worse situation than you are. Yesterday I was talking to one lady and, and I was really shocked. It reached a moment where I looked at my own circumstances and I say, why have I been complaining? This lady is really going through tough time. But I remember when I was speaking to her yesterday and I said, lady, listen to me. You know what? Tough time never lasts, but tough people do. You go through tough and there is no one to run to. But I want to tell you that your maker, your Lord, his goodness is running after you. And what he's seeking to do is to get good to get the best out of your life. Joseph went through a lot. If we read the story of Joseph, you know, that from the age of 17 and how his own brothers sold him as a slave and he suffered because of the love that the father had shown him and Joseph suffered tremendously. He suffered but as we will hear from this message, I'm going to share that in the end, goodness and good and the best came out of him. If he had remained in his father's house, whatever was happening, he was not going to fulfill the purpose of God. So sometimes what you are going through, as you listen to me, whatever you are going through, the challenges you're going through, something good has to be squeezed out of you and there's no other way that this thing will come out of you unless you pass through the fire you pass through the waters you pass through the tunnel where you cannot see 
and the light. Psalms 23, 13 says this. I would have despaired. This is David again. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can you hear that? He would have despaired. He would have given up. If he had not believed that eventually he would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not in the land of the dead. How many times have you feel like despairing up? But something behind you tells you there is something good that is coming. Listen to that little still voice within you, within you, that tells you, baby, sister, brother, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't commit suicide. Don't kill yourself. Don't revenge. Vengeance belongs to me. Listen to that small little voice. It may have caused you so much shame. But remember, shame can turn into fame. My God, remember that pain you are in can turn into gain. Being reduced to zero immediately can turn and elevate you into a hero. Just give God an opportunity to show good in you. Psalms 27, 13 again. He says, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. These words were written by a man who demonstrates a living faith in the living God. He had an assurance that no matter what difficulties and dangers that stopped his path, God would come to rescue him. And he simply had to wait confidently for the Lord to act. That's it. Just confident. Be confident in this. Be confident in this. No matter what I will go through, I will not give up. Trust him with all your heart. Oh, I'm telling you, in Psalms, or not Psalms, it is in Proverbs chapter 3, if I'm not wrong, 5 to 6. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all, not part of your heart, with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. He said, in all your ways, in all your ways, all of them, in all your ways, acknowledge him. My God, it's not easy. Even as I speak this word, as I speak it, it, it's not even easy to come out of my mouth because when you're telling somebody in all your ways, acknowledge God, it is not easy. It has to take a revelation for you to acknowledge God and to say this is the doing of God. That when you're going through the fire and you're saying somebody, it is all right, it is well. Like that woman who lost a child and the child is dead and he's running to the servant. Elijah, and, and when the, 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 the Kehasi was coming and asking, is everything all right? And he said, it is well. Yet behind her, she has left a son dead on bed. And he said, it is well. Because she believed that out of her son, something good will come out. She knew in her heart, if I confess to say my son is dead, indeed, I have affirmed it and nailed it. But she knew deep in her heart that something and the best must come out of my child. A child that was prophesied upon her by the prophet. She didn't even ask for it. But the prophet told her that at, uh, when that because of the bed she was given and, 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 and uh, the bed that the prophet was given, he, she he just prophesied to this woman and said, you will have a child. And so when she was coming to Elijah, she, she didn't ask for this child. So when she was asked, is everything well? She speaks and said, yes, it is well. When you are speaking confidently and saying things are well, not everybody can do it. But it only takes them who know that they know that they know that they know that no matter what I go through, something good will come out of me. 
something good will be celebrated out of my life. My life will not end in the pit. My life will not end in, in, in like a tissue paper that you are tired and used and flushed. My life will be celebrated. And you keep putting your head high. You keep talking about it. You keep confessing. You keep preparing yourself for it. Sometimes I was telling people, sometimes people find me crazy sometimes. Even if I'm not going anywhere, I get ready. I dress well. I can even dress two times when we were locked up in this corner. I dress even two times. If the trumpet is called and something good would come out, I would run out ready for it and I'm ready to celebrate it. If something good comes and find me with a stocking on the head and I run out, people will not even compare the blessing and the visitation of God with what is happening. Be ready for God coming and visiting you because goodness is coming. Hallelujah. Why? God has good thoughts and plans for us. Plans for good, not for evil. He has a plan for us. And he has planned this in advance before the creation of the earth. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. He knew you by name. He knew that you will be a female. He knew that you will be a male. He will know that you will be black or brown or whatever color it is. He knew even the tribe you will be you are coming from. He knew you. You are not a coincidence. You are not, you know, a, 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 a you know, Bahati, you are an original and an authentic that God created you for a purpose. And so that gives you the confidence and you have no you know, competition. You are unique and you, you are yourself. Me personally, I know I'm unique. The way I talk, the way I walk, my body shape, my everything, I am unique and there is no competitor. I do not compete with anyone because I know how unique I am. And I know the good part of me will come out and it must be celebrated. And when you are found this every day and you walk out like David when he said that since I was young until I grew old, I never saw the righteous forsaken. So I know that I will not be forsaken and something good must come out of my life. I want you to see a bigger picture. See a bigger picture in some of the difficult moments that you are going through or I am going through. See a bigger picture out of it. Expand it further and ask yourself, why did God allow me to go through this thing? Is there a, a script that you want me to, to read and understand inside this thing, inside this relationship, inside this problem? Do you want me to understand something? You know what? Not everything we are going through is meant to finish us, but to make us greater. It's to make us greater, to make us better. It, it make us famous, make us powerful, to make us useful, to make us relevant, to make us to be recognized. Sometimes you may not be recognized until something comes. Some fire burns you. You know, Moses would not have come closer to God if the bush could not burn. It is until that bush burned and the fire was burning and he realized that the, the, the bush is not being consumed. Why? And he came closer. Sometimes the things you are going through and the things we pass through is burning, but it's not consuming us. And this is what attracts people to look at you and to check on you and to see what is happening to Margaret and they come looking for you. That is where God will begin to speak. That is where God will begin to manifest. This is where God will begin to show his glory. This is where he will show his power of resurrection. This is where he will show his power of provision. This is where he will show his power of safety. His power of faithfulness. This is where his attributes would come out so clearly. You become a, a, a book to be read. Your difficulties becomes a center and a focal point for people to understand God better. So don't run away from the situations and the circumstances of life you are going through. Hide yourself in God. Hallelujah. When you hide yourself in it, you will not be alone. 
because you are hiding yourself too in the promises of God. God's promises is what has sustained us personally. I do not know where I would be today if it wasn't for the promises of God. And this some, some of the promises of God have been spoken to me by him personally through dreams, through the interpretation of the word of God, through prophecies that people have spoken to me. And I have put them down. I've enlisted that some of these promises and some have passed and some have not. And those which have not, I'm hanging on it. Like, you know, I hung on the truth of the word of God because I know it shall come to pass. Because if the others have passed and this one have not passed, then I know good and the best is about to happen in my life. And there are big, a big picture that God has given me about who I am. Sometimes I wonder if it comes really, and if it came the way I was, how was I going to contain it? So the promises of God is what I am angering on. John 7, 38 said, give us, it gives us the assurance that whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. So if you believe in him, that's one of the promises. If you believe in him, good will come out of you. So this bad that is showing up, that's not your portion. You know very well, you have rivers of living water. You have words that will change lives. You have words that will prophesy to other people. You have a river within yourself. And this is the river that will lead you. This is the river that will help you. This is the river that will sustain you. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Not one river. Rivers. Depending on how you understand it. Rivers of living water. Living words of life. Second Corinthians 1.20 Paul basically brings together his old defense and say, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him are amen. He's spoken by us to the glory of God. You know, isn't that wonderful? When you are aware and you're sensitive and you know that the promises of God are true, are yes and amen, Whatever he has spoken about you, just give him time. It shall come to pass. He will not change his mind. It's in Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. The Bible says, God is not man that he should lie. Or son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak, then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? No, he is not man, neither son no man. When he promises you, he will never change. I remember one time I prayed with someone, you know, very well. And, and you know, the manifestation of God was so real and, and God did wonders and wonderful things. And, 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 and the person was moved and excited and promised me, oh, Margaret, I will buy you a car. Oh, because of what you have done, I will buy you a car. And my God, I was so excited. And I said, why a car? After a few days or so, rang and said, no, I didn't mean what I said. You know, I realized that I, I did not have enough finances because it went to somewhere else. That is man for you. But God is not like that. God, when he say, I will bless you, I will bless you. When he say, I will promote you, he will promote you. I will elevate you, I will elevate you. When God promises, he will do it. It's for you to wait upon him. He's not a liar. So when he promises good will come out of you, it will. It will. You only, as I, pro, as I said in the beginning, you need to affirm it. You need to hold on it. You need to confess it. You need to speak it. The, I have learned all the time, even when I'm in pain, even when I do not know what will happen next, and you ask me, oh, Margaret, how are you? You know what I say? I say, I am blessed. I am blessed. That's my password. I am blessed. Even when I know I'll be sleeping on the floor, I will say I am blessed. Because if you count your blessings and name them one by one and see what the Lord has done for you, 
There is so much that he has done for you. And because we are never contented, we keep asking for more and more and more and more and more. When you can still breathe, when you have life, when you have a sound mind, when you can listen, when you are, in, you are not in hospital with, 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 with um, tubes and everything, you're okay, but you're still asking for more and more and more and more. God is not man to change his mind, neither son of man to repent of what he said about you. When he speaks, he will act. He promises and he fulfills. What are some of the promises that you, God has given you? Maybe I can provoke to your mind to remind you a few. One of them for me is, so he promised me, Margaret, I will be with you to the end of the age. Hallelujah. He will be with me. I know I'm not alone every day. He's promised to protect me and to preserve me and my life and my family. He has promised to give me strength. Like in Isaiah 40, 29, he said, he gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. That's, that is a promise. And every time I feel weak, I know the Lord will renew my strength. He said, I will renew my strength. I will, I will mount up in in wings like an eagle. I will run. I will run, run, run. And I will not be weary. Sometimes we run with things. We run, we go, and we become weary. What do you do? We curse. And we we speak. Oh, sorry. And we speak badly. Sorry. Um, the thing is falling apart. Just give me one minute. Technology, sorry. <laughs> Give me one minute, guys. Oh, thank you. You see, so sometimes you run and you run and you run and you become very weary, and yet God has promised to give you extraordinary strength. Give God has promised me that He will answer all my prayers. Ask and you will receive, and your joy shall be complete. And those are the promises that God has given me. Is is promised to provide for my daily needs. And, and I want to promise you that God has been faithful in the area of provision for me. Why is he doing this? He's doing this because he's expecting me to be patient enough that the good must come out of me. The best must come out of me as he has promised. And so as I continue to, to, to dwell on his promises... He's promised me peace, shalom. He's a God of peace. He will, he, and he will always love me. Those are some of the promises that personally I rely on and hunger on and affirm on as I wait on the Lord. And I'm sure these are the promises that Joseph did as, as he, he went through the circumstances of his life. If you read the life of Joseph from Genesis chapter 37 right to 50, it's one of the longest story in the Bible of describing the life of one person. Joseph from, from Genesis 37 right to 50, describing the journey of this young man who God promised him that his brothers and his family will bow before him. And then all of a sudden, things turned upside down the conspiracy of the family and he is thrown out from the family i want to tell you when something good is about to come out of your life see what happens to you your life is turned upside down your life is turned around death sometimes strike poverty comes in maybe sickness comes in and you get an infirmity, you don't know what is happening. Relationship break. Things happen upside down and your head is spinning. Don't worry. Something good must come out of all this. Something good. And I want you to believe me that something good is coming. Hallelujah. All or some of these promises and to be achieved. These promises that he's giving us sometimes will make you go through fire, as I have said, through the trials and the persecutions, challenges, go through pain and rejection. You go through loneliness. The best will come out of it. I'm speaking to somebody listening to me right now, and you could be in the pit, and maybe your family members have thrown you into the pit. 
conspiracy of family have rejected you and thrown you into the pit. I'm speaking to someone who is in pain, unspeakable pain. I'm speaking to someone who has just lost a loved one. I'm speaking to someone who has just gotten divorce papers or you have just been divorced. <laughs> I'm speaking to someone whose child on, is on drugs. Oh my God. Or alcohol. My Lord. And you are so much in pain and agony. That after all what you have done. All what you have uh, worked hard for. Educated your child. Is coming back from school with zero. Nothing to tell. It is painful. Can I promise you something. As I speak this message tonight. That something good is coming out of you something good will come forth in the land of the living as we have read the word of god the goodness of the lord is running after you my god do not fear do not be afraid do not fear the lord will show up in a little just in a little while this message i'm sharing tonight is not to remind you that you know that uh, there is uh, you know there are some messages that are coming these days as a receive in the name of jesus <laughs> this message i'm preaching is to let you know that we must go through fire sometimes to get the best out of us we must be squeezed. <laughs> we must be hard pressed to get good out of us. To get olive oil, which is the most expensive oil at the moment, and it is a healthy uh, oil that every family is using at the moment, the seeds must be hard pressed. <laughs> to get gold, pure gold, the best, it must go through the burning furnace. It must be purified. Even if it means you being separated from your family like Joseph, being rejected and being imprisoned, for God to get the best out of you, it can happen. Even if it means you being denied, so that self must die in you. Pride to come out. Selfishness. To come out. In this process. That you are going through. Your flesh will be crucified. You die to self. You die to accusations. You die to people pointing a finger at you. You die to quarrels. People will talk and talk and you don't even feel anything. Because that self has been squeezed out of you. Hallelujah. Paul spoke these words in Galatians chapter 20, chapter 2, Galatians 2, 20. It says this, I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. I've shared his pain. I've shared his shame. And he said, it is no, it, it's no longer I who live it, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, in the body, I live by faith. That means I live by adoring to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave up for me. You know, this scripture one time, we used to memorize it, and I could not understand really what it meant. But as time goes by, the, this, this, this um, scripture become a reality because it's a life living experience where you feel you've been crucified with Christ, that the challenges of life you're facing through, you comparison with, with Christ, so that you die to self and you live a life of faith. When you live a life of faith, every challenge becomes a blessing. Hallelujah. It says, there's this song which you used to sing, every problem becomes a blessing. When I know the Lord is mine, every challenge becomes a blessing. When I know the Lord is mine, 
The best of Joseph came out in stages for him to utter these words in Genesis 50, 20. To utter these words, as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. As I've spoken earlier, let us align our purpose. Let us align our ministries. Let us align our marriages. Hallelujah. Let us align our relationships. Let us align our pain, our suffering, our sorrows, our failures with God's promise upon our lives. And this will help us so that we, we gain out of it. Because out of these things, we gain. That is where we die to self. That is where our confidence and our trust and our hope in God will grow and will manifest. That is where we hide. That is where we seek him diligently. Oh my God, this is where we, we pray so that when we are at fresh, we pray without ceasing. We read the word of God. That is where our provision comes from. That is where our protection, like the psalmist when he wrote and he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures beside quiet waters. And he said, even though I pass through, I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your road and your staff. My God, they comfort me. And you will lay a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is where we find freedom. We find salvation and we find promotion. In this challenge you're going through, hang on on the promises of God. Because eventually you will find salvation. Eventually you will find promotion. Joseph's best moments came out not the way he wanted or expected, but because he feared God in all his stages of life. He became fruitful and his best came out in affliction. This message is not for them who feel they have arrived. Not for them who feel, uh, when I pray, uh, uh, Satan flees. This message is for the Josephs, for the people who feel lonely, rejected, and they do not know what to do. Families who don't understand what is happening and everyone don't even understand the strange dreams you are talking about. Don't worry. I want to promise you, as you anger on God, as you anger and wait on him, no eye has seen and no ear has heard Hallelujah. And no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for you and for them whom he love. God will do marvelous things in our lives in this season. Isaiah 43, 4 says, since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nation in exchange for you because of the love he has for us. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to go through this. Good and the best must come out of us. Don't give up. Don't give up. Joseph's best came out in three stages. He came and became fruitful through rejection. He was rejected. And when he was rejected and thrown into the pit and picked from the pit, he went to Pharaoh's house. While he was in Pharaoh's house, the Bible says that the house of Pharaoh was so much blessed because of Joseph. So in his rejection, he became a blessing. I want to encourage whoever is listening to me right now, that in your moment of vulnerability, that is the best moment that the best of you can show up. Be a blessing wherever you are. Be a blessing in pain and show yourself worthy. So show yourself great and strong because you are not alone, because God is together with you. Two, Joseph became fruitful through false accusation. When the wife of Potiphar accused him that he wanted to, to sleep with him and rape him, Joseph was thrown 
into prison. And while he was there, he was able to interpret the, tree, the dreams of the prisoners. And his ministry began then. And he became a blessing there by interpreting the dreams of with the, 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 the people he was with and one of them was released. So he became productive even in isolation and even in accusation. The third uh, part of Joseph's life, he became fruitful through being forgotten. So when he was forgotten, this man whom he dreamt for and told him, when you go, remember me. He didn't remember him. But later on, the king had a dream and nobody all over Egypt would interpret his dream. And that man who had forgotten, remember, there was a man who interpreted by dream. And he came, Joseph was brought before the king and he was able to interpret the, the dream. So when he interpreted the dream, hallelujah, his life changed instantly. Thankfully, when Pharaoh had a couple of bad dreams two years later, and none of his wise men could interpret the dream, the chief carpenter memory came alive again. This resulted in him recommending Joseph's ability to interpret dreams to the king, and the rest is history. Joseph was released from prison and promoted to the second highest position in Egypt at the age of 30. He was assigned to have tax of saving the nation of Egypt and the surrounding world from the famine that was about to break up. The best came out of Joseph. Hallelujah! I'm asking you, wait a little while. Joseph waited for 13 years for the best to come out of him and to come into fame instead of shame. Joseph's status changed so many times for, from being a favorite son to a favorite slave and from being a favorite slave to a favorite ex executive, from being a favorite prisoner to being a favorite diplomat. She became a diplomat to represent Israel. So when God has purpose to bless you. Your name will change from stage to stage, from the rejected one to the loved one, from shame to fame, hallelujah, from a loss to a gain, from zero to a hero. Are you still there? Wait upon God. Something good must come out of you. Joseph's life became a blessing and became faithful to his family. This is the best of Joseph that came out. The fourth one. The best of Joseph came out when he met his brothers. And he confessed in Genesis 50, 20. And he said, for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people would be kept alive as they are today. What happened? The same people who sold him, who mistreated him, who threw him away, came and fell before the feet of Joseph, asking for forgiveness and asking for mercy after 13 years. And when they came before him, Joseph showed them love. He showed them forgiveness. He provided for them. He united the family and he protected the family. I want to tell you, whoever is listening, those who have mistreated you, those who have done evil to you, they will come back and ask you for forgiveness. And when they come, you do not need to revenge. You need to show them the love of God. You need to show them the love of Jesus. The life of Joseph is compared to Jesus because it's equally the same. What Joseph did is what Jesus did because when Jesus died, he forgave those who, who crucified him. He forgave them physically and he forgave us spiritually, forgiving our sins. And he showed us love. Hallelujah. He showed us protection and he has given us provision. That's exactly what Joseph did. And that's what God expects in us that when goodness comes upon us, when good things begin to come upon us, let this good that is coming out of you, that is about to be birthed, that is about to manifest in it, glorify God in 
everything. You will not use it against your enemies to batter your enemies and remind them. Do you remember what you did to me? This is not a moment to remind your enemies what they did. This is a moment for you to put your head high and stay in a higher level because you are already elevated beyond their imagination. This is where God has lifted you as a hero. And you do not use your position to molest or to abuse or to revenge for those people who tortured your life. This is when they are crying for mercy. Because when you come out of this situation, you sh the first gift that God would have given you is a spirit of mercy. Where you show mercy of whom you should show mercy. Because our God is a God of mercy. And he said in, 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 in Numbers, somewhere in Numbers, I think 16, he said, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. Joseph had to show compassion and mercy to his brothers and sisters because he knew that I was fulfilling destiny. I was fulfilling the promises of God. He knew immediately that his dream has, had been answered. And none of his brothers or his family members worked for it. It is only him and his God. If, if he, he, he upheld God's truth, he upheld God's name, and he never sinned against him, even one minute. And God held him all through. When people deny you, do not worry. Trust in God with all your heart. He will not leave you, neither will he forsake you, because he loves you, because you are honorable, you are lovable, and you are treasurable. God will not leave you, neither will he forsake you. After what you have gone through, and God puts you in a position of honor, as I have said, and on, on authority, remember to give glory back to him. Remember to give him back the glory. Joseph did it. And he said, I am in the place of God, my Lord. You know what? I am trembling as I share this message. That when you put yourself in the place of God, nobody will touch you. You are untouchable. And you do not need to fight for yourself. Vengeance belongs to God. Give him an opportunity to defend you. Don't fight you know, sometimes we, we, we may not speak, but our body language can tell us otherwise. We may betray and re uh, communicate through our body language, our body behavior. Show the love of God in all aspects and all areas of your life and he will defend you. When you avenge, he stands aside and he will not fight for you. If you want God to fight for your trouble, may I tell you something? Be calm, release to him, both emotionally, socially, physically. Let him fight for you. Vengeance belongs to God and when the time comes and all will fall in place you will be found in the place of God that is where Joseph said I am in the place of God yes they came to bow before him and, and ask for forgiveness he said I am in a place of God it was you meant it bad yourselves but my father in heaven God meant it for good not for Joseph's sake, yes, it may have been Joseph's sake, but he said so that lives would be saved. Whatever you are going through may not really even be you who will benefit so much, but there's somebody whom God wants to reach through you. There's a family that God wants to reach through you. There's a child. There's somebody, and may not even be the member of your family, but somebody somewhere, and that will allow you to fulfill purpose in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I've said, Joseph waited for so long, and the best came out of him. The best of Joseph stood before his family, and they bowed down before him to fulfill the dream. And Joseph was blessed. The best came out to bless Joseph. The best came out to, to, to bless the foreign country, to, 
to bless Egypt because of the wisdom that he had. He was able to plan for, for tomorrow. And that is why when the famine came in, in Egypt, there were plenty. There was, the, there was a lot of food to, to, to save lives, including his own family. The best of Joseph came to bless his family and salvation came to the family because they were going to starve. So Joseph became the savior of the family. No wonder Jesus is compared to Joseph as I have spoken earlier because of the salvation. Joseph also, not to forget, best came to those who mistreated him. The best for Joseph came and he became a foundation of Abrahamic promise through his father Jacob and became an epitome of God's promise for the nation of Israel. And that's why today we read and say that we, 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 we thank the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Because through him and his sacrifice and his pain and his suffering and his endurance, the nation of Israel was preserved from starvation and they multiplied in Egypt to fulfill the promise of God that they said they will go into a foreign land for 430 years to preserve the seed of Abraham. And the person who did it was Joseph. I want to ask you, you listening, do you know that God is allowing you to go through what you're going through because he wants to preserve your family? He wants to preserve the nation. He wants to preserve the body of Christ through you. Your best is coming out and it must come out in Jesus' name. My prayer is this, do not give up. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, yes, the best of us and God's promise comes out in moments of pain, moments of shame, moments of loss. The best comes out as well at our ground zero hour. Your best is coming out as I speak to you right now. In this season, in this hour, in this week, in this month, in this year, do not give up. Don't give up. Hang on because God will make sure that the best comes out of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for this message that whoever is listening, that they will not give up, but they will hold on, my God, to the mark of their higher calling. And the mark of their higher calling is the best that you have kept in store for them. They will be fruitful in entire time of affliction. They will thrive in the time of pain. They will thrive in the moment of rejection. They will thrive in the moment of being forgotten. They will thrive in the moment they are in the pit. They will thrive in prison. They will thrive in their families in the name of Jesus. Because you have purpose and your promise is yes and amen. Your promise, my father, never changes. When you say yes, nobody can say no. And as we have read in Numbers 23, 19, that you are not uh, uh, son, you are not man to, 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 to repent of what you're saying or son of man to, for, to, to withdraw what you have said. When you say you bless, you are blessed. And I know everyone listening to this message, my father will achieve the best and the good will come out of their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. And I know God is with you from now on, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.